I hate it here. What's cracking? Big dogs. And try to muster up some energy for this one. Sad day at the HQ. For real. You know, Julio. Julio's a guy that I, uh, as a Falcons fan, Julio's a dude that, you know, I most of my fandom came attached to Julio Jones. He's been someone that's been a part of the team for uh, for a long time. So, you know, the identity of Atlanta has always been kind of wrapped in Matt Ryan and Julio Jones. So to see uh, to see a little bit of that breakup this morning to make it official is sad. It's a it's a sad day overall. You know, I, I don't usually get emotional about sports. I'm strictly fucking business. But uh, but just salute to Julio and everything he did for uh, for us Falcons fans and. I will I will deeply miss him and it's gonna see it's gonna be fucking weird seeing him in white. White and ugly ass blue and light blue and dark blue and whatever the fuck your pathetic uniforms are out there in Tennessee. Regardless, we've got to cover this for fantasy football. Lot to cover. We have the fallout for the Titans, we have the fallout for the Falcons, redraft, dynasty, everything involved. So we're about to we're about to break it down. Okay. Julio Jones gets moved to Tennessee in exchange for a second-round pick. Uh, it says at least a second-round pick. The uh, The trade has not been official yet. It says uh, over the next 24 to 48 hours it will become official, so nothing concrete yet. Nothing concrete yet. I might I might go uh, I might go drug Julio Jones so that he fails his physical. You know, there are a lot of ideas floating around, right? a lot of bad ideas. That's what happens on a Sunday. You wake up hungover. Everyone's yelling, and he's bad. I, I want to do bad things. I want to do bad things. Say we're not going to do it, though. All right, Julio's going to go to Tennessee. It's a fun state. It's a fun city. Nashville, you know, he's going to he's going to tear up Broadway. Julio and AJB walking down Broadway together is a bad sight. It's a bad fucking sight that I want no part of. But it begs the question, what happens now with fantasy? Where does Julio go? Where does AJ Brown go, right? Because AJ Brown was making the move to become the wide receiver one overall in, in both Dynasty and you can make the argument for redraft sooner rather than later. He was going to be the only option there, right? Tannehill started falling down a little bit because he loses the the weapons of, of Jonu Smith and Corey Davis. So let's let's start with the Falcon side, okay? So they get rid of Julio, which is an elite passing option for Matt Ryan. Matt Ryan is going to be a guy that I stay away from in most leagues he should probably be in the 15 to 18 range in terms of quarterback rankings for redraft in dynasty he's a guy that you want to get out of under quicker sooner rather than later uh, i got a, a question on yesterday's q a q and assault would i move matt ryan or would i trade a, a back end first for matt ryan i would not uh at this point because matt ryan averaged like you know it was it was a mediocre extra medium 17 and a half fantasy points per game last year that's not much higher than like the Derek Carrs and the Kirk Cousins of the world or whatever. Kirk might have actually been ahead of him. Um, and he did that averaging the single highest number of pass attempts in the league. Uh, he had the, he had the highest pass attempt number in the league of all quarterbacks. So the volume is going to dip down this year. Now he doesn't have Julio. Like Matt Ryan's not a guy that you're going to be wanting to click the draft button on. You know, you want to get him as a, as a, like a medium floor guy as your quarterback two or something in super flex leagues. Cool. Otherwise, uh, Matt Ryan's not a guy that I want in fantasy anymore. Calvin Ridley, obviously a guy that we do want in fantasy. I think his ceiling goes to, you know, I mean, depending on Devontae Adams, uh, the Aaron Rodgers situation, like I think you could draft Calvin Ridley as high as probably wide receiver three now in redraft. We're talking about Tyree Kill, we're talking about Devontae Adams. If Aaron Rodgers is there, those two I think are cemented as the one and two. And then uh, I haven't done my season-long rankings yet, but just kind of off the rip, you've got Ridley right there in the Stephon Diggs category. You might want to go Diggs because we've actually seen him hit the ceiling. But in any games where Calvin Ridley has played without Julio Jones, the numbers have been gaudy. The numbers have been silly, and uh, I expect no less. He has taken over as the alpha now in Atlanta. He's proven he could do it without Julio. He's proven he could do it with Julio. It doesn't matter. This is not the juju situation where we don't know what he's going to be on his own getting the number one coverage. He proved it. Anytime Julio's not been on the field, he goes like seven for 157 in a touchdown. So Calvin Ridley, uh, he becomes an interesting like second round pick in redraft. If you, uh, you know, if, if you're picking really early in the first round, you know, you got C-Mac, you got Saquon, Dalvin Cook, whatever, Derrick Henry off the board. And you're at that back end of the second round, you know, and all the running backs left are kind of risky. And, you know, Travis Kelsey's off the board and you're thinking about the wide receivers there. You know, now AJB is not the guy that you want there. You ain't going to be drafting AJ Brown at the 206, 207, 208. But Calvin Ridley's a guy that, you know, uh, I, I think you could start smashing the button there. I think his I think his floor is, you know, 80 catches, 1,300 yards, and probably 8 to 10 touchdowns. But we haven't seen a ceiling yet. His ceiling as the alpha without Julio there 
could be really, 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 really high. So um, Ridley, obviously, huge, huge winner from the Julio ordeal. What happens behind Calvin Ridley? Listen, like we could talk about Russell Gage. I don't really know what they're planning to do with this offense. You have Arthur Smith coming in that could go a little bit more two tight end sets. And if that's the case, I don't know if Russell Gage is like an outside wide receiver. He's a slot guy. He's a slot guy. So maybe he, you know, maybe they do run 11 personnel. But I think Hayden Hurst is going to get on the field a lot. I think he's going to be on the field with Kyle Pitts, which begs the question. Kyle Pitts, man. Kyle Pitts now becomes at his. I was actually drafting a lot of Kyle Pitts as his like at his like sixty to sixty five ADP in redraft on Underdog Fantasy. Now he's going to shoot up into like the third, fourth round with the Darren Wallers and the Kittles. I'm not going to be drafting him along with Darren Waller and Kittle, but if he starts to dip into you know the late fourth round, I'm there on him. Uh, but he's still a rookie. He's still a rookie, and there's still uh, a lot of skepticism and question marks. With, you know, what his role is going to be immediately. A lot of the times, as you, uh, if you're a tight end, like, listen, those other guys, Darren Waller, George Kittle, Travis Kelsey, are playing 100% of the downs. And they are running routes all of the time. If Kyle Pitts even is playing on 70% of the snaps or 65% of the snaps instead of 85 to 90, he becomes a questionable pick. Because we don't know what his role is going to be immediately. Yes, he's going to be a pass catcher and he's probably going to be the second weapon in this offense. Redraft, he gets a little dicey. I will I will be avoiding him if his, if his ADP gets into the third round. You want to fuck around and, you know, you want to have some fun with Kyle Pitts and draft him in the fourth round or the fifth round. I'm not going to get mad at you. Um, his ADP is about to shoot up, though. It was 60. He was the tight end four overall. He'll probably remain the tight end four in ADP. Uh, Dynasty, obviously, this shouldn't really affect anything. He was the tight end one in the rookie class for sure. And uh, we all knew Julio was kind of on his way out. Anyways, so Kyle Pitts, I mean, I'll probably not own shares of him. I, I'm not trying to figure out how to say this in an in, using in, correct grammatical English. I'll probably not own more shares than I will own more shares. I might I might draft him one time just because I want to own some Kyle Pitts somewhere, but I'm not out here preaching that we should be targeting him. I don't think he's a fantastic target in uh, redraft leagues right now. Um, yeah, so Russell Gage becomes interesting, obviously, as like a, I don't know, whatever. I think we know what Russell Gage is. He's a slot player that can that can eat up targets if he needs to, if, uh, if the offense dictates it, if they double up Calvin Ridley, they put the coverage over the top or whatever, and they can't go deep, and they need to dump it off. Uh, Zacchaeus becomes a little bit interesting, too. He's like a deep threat, so if you're in a dynasty league, I would try to pick up. I'm sure Russell Gage has already picked up, but uh, but Zacchaeus becomes interesting as well because he could be another guy that takes the top off the defense. Um, so I would pick him up as well and just kind of see what happens there in Atlanta. Who else? Do we have anyone else in Atlanta to talk about? Yeah, it doesn't really affect the pass or the running game for me. For Tennessee, though, things get dicey. Things get dicey because Tannehill was a guy that I was going to avoid. And now it just there's no real case to be made. Arthur Smith is gone, so you question the play action. Are they going to still run a lot of play action, which makes the offense efficient? Uh, their red zone efficiency was ridiculous. I just think that, I mean, listen, Tannehill's proven himself to be a good quarterback. If, if nothing else, a little bit above average. And when you put weapons like Julio and A.J. Brown together, you don't need to say much more. So Tannehill went from a guy who was, I believe he was quarterback 16 in ADP. He becomes a guy who I think, you know, you could draft in top 10 for sure. I think he gives you a nice floor with the rushing, and now he's got a ceiling with Julio and AJB because no one's going to be able to double coverage any fucking player there. They lose Corey Davis, they lose Jonas Smith, which is, I want to say, like 100, uh, 165 combined targets. So that begs the question, what happens with AJ Brown? What's AJ Brown's ceiling? Where I probably had him ranked as like the wide receiver four-ish in redraft he's definitely going to drop down to I would say like the wide receiver 10 11 ish range Julio will probably settle in at the wide receiver like 13 to 14 uh AJ Brown younger I think he is for sure the alpha there right Julio Jones still has a lot of gas left in the tank but you know looking at a few different things just watching him play he's, he's taking a little bit of a beating on his legs obviously look at Matt Harmon's reception perception Julio dipped off a little bit on the deep ball um, but I would imagine they dial up a lot of deep balls for this team, for A.J. Brown, for Julio Jones. A.J. Brown's awesome with the yak, so I'd imagine uh, he is going to be like the short offensive area of the field and just absolutely eat up targets and be a PPR fucking monster. And then Julio Jones will probably take a lot of uh, a lot of deep shots. I think A.J. Brown obviously gets those too, but I think this actually works out for A.J. Brown getting a lot less coverage at the line of scrimmage, can't really get double teamed, and I think that will lead to a lot of screens, a lot of slants, a lot of short dump offs where he takes them to the fucking crib and eats up the yak. So AJ Brown obviously dips off because his ceiling could have been like 160 targets this year. Not going to be the case with Julio there anymore. What happens in dynasty? 
Let's bring up Julio's contract. Let's bring up his contract. Uh, Julio is signed through 2023. Okay. So he's got 2021. They cannot cut him. 2022, they cannot cut him or else they're going to eat a fuckload of dead cap. 2023, they can get out of the contract, but it's still eating $8 million of dead cap. So um, he's going to be on the Titans for at least the next two years. Okay. This is like a this is just a good offense to be in, right? He doesn't have the ceiling of being in Atlanta where we'd probably expect him to get 140, 150 targets a year. But I think he provides you with a nice like wide receiver two, uh, you know, mid mid wide receiver two for dynasty for the next couple of years. And if something happens, AJB, I mean Julio's obviously gonna take over as the alpha, see a huge target share there. Um, but both of them, you know, it, it, it's just like two really talented guys in an offense that's not very pass heavy because they still have Derrick Henry. Begs the question, you know, you cannot stack the fucking box against Derrick Henry anymore. Not that we need Derrick Henry to have more of a ceiling on the rushing floor, on the rushing front of things. But I've heard a lot of shit over the last couple of days that Derrick Henry's a guy to fucking avoid in the first round of fantasy drafts, which is absurd, which is ridiculous. You're drafting Derrick Henry. You're drafting both A.J. Brown as a back-end wide receiver one, Julio Jones as a wide receiver two, Ryan Tannehill as a quarterback one. Who else do we have here? Who else do we have here? Josh Reynolds. Okay, I'm glad all you guys got shares of Josh Reynolds while you could. Happy for you. Good for you. Um, Stop yelling because it is a Sunday. Josh Reynolds shares are worth fucking less than I was going to say AMC shares, but that shit's to the moon right now. What else do we got? What else do we got here? What else do we got here? Uh, I guess AJ Brown and Dynasty. What happens? AJ Brown and Dynasty. uh, Are we going to say like, oh, it's just Dynasty. So, you know, long term, he's still the wide receiver one. I don't know if that's the right way to look at it, guys, because as I always say in Dynasty, the most important year is the year that's happening right now. So if AJB just dropped from like wide receiver three down to wide receiver 10 in that range, it matters. It matters for Dynasty. Is a guy is he a guy that you want in Dynasty? Yes, he's probably the next Julio, right? They're the same fucking player. AJ Brown's just 10 years younger. Um, so if you're telling me I'm getting Julio, you know, but he's got to share targets with Roddy White for the first couple of years. You're still drafting him very high. So I think he probably drops down from like the wide receiver one, maybe to like the wide receiver two or three or whatever. But like, listen, if you want to take him as a wide receiver one, again, I think like it's not a big deal. I talked about this yesterday in the Q&A. Splitting hairs between a guy who is going to get 15.7 points per game and 15.2 points per game over the next two years, it's not that's not going to be the make or break, right? A.J. Brown versus Justin Jefferson versus Tyree Kill versus Devontae and all these guys that are going to get you, you know, wide receiver one elite numbers for the next two to three years, the next five to seven years, whatever. It's not what moves the needle for you. Okay. You're not going to look back and be like, fuck, I would have won a championship if I had went Justin Jefferson over AJ Brown or vice versa. So don't think too hard about it in, in dynasty, still a top end elite wide receiver in that format. Um, am I missing anybody? Am I missing anything that's important? I don't think so. Tennessee literally just has like four players on their offense. They could they could trot out five linemen and four four skill players: Tannehill, Julio, AJ Brown, Derrick Henry, and probably still make it to the to the fucking Super Bowl. So I mean that's why they made the move at the end of the day, right? It's Julio Jones going to going to Tennessee to put them over the edge. They needed another explosive playmaker on offense, and now they have three absolutely out of control elite playmakers, and uh, hopefully that'll push them over the edge that they needed. And we have the Falcons just in shambles. I don't know what the fuck we're doing. Uh, that's it. I'm sorry. I didn't have a lot of energy for this video, but I hope it I hope it helped. If it did, make sure you subscribe to the channel because we're doing fantasy football shit literally every single day. I'll see you for a mock draft tomorrow. Uh, and hit the thumbs up button. I'm out. I'm going to go fucking grab some donuts. Enjoy your day.